We must pay for the water we drink. The wood we get must be bought. Our pursuers are at our necks. We are weary. We are given no rest. Eliminations, chapter 5, verse 4 through 5. Hey fam bam, it's me, just Londa. Have you subscribed? Have you joined the fam? Join the madness, join the fun. It's me, just Londa. Can we talk that talk? Update on the massive port strike that's happening in the United States starting tonight. Since a lot of people seem to doubt the shortages and effects, here's some screenshots. Pause to read about the things that would be significantly impacted, like protos, medication, and beef and meat. I reported this a little over a week ago because the mainstream media wasn't talking about this port strike. It's going to have a huge effect on our prices and uh, cause shortages and backups just in time for the holiday season. Make sure you have is your medications because they say it could affect our medications. As we are reporting that this is going to affect produce heavily. Um, so we're looking at produce, gas, car parts. As somebody who has worked in the insurance industry before, I can tell you that if car parts are, are affected, we already had a massive effect on auto parts last year because of the auto union strike. We still haven't caught up, like we're still having shortages in the insurance industry, like when there's an accident, parts for up to a year cannot be found. You could click back on this original video to get the general information, but a lot of people don't understand that this wasn't being reported by the mainstream. I got the information from industry-specific sources um, and places like Forbes, Business Insider, this. A lot of people seem to think that it's actually not going to affect us the way that I've reported. The information that I provided are from supply chain experts. So. Despite the fact that this strike is just going to happen on the Gulf Coast and the East Coast, it's still going to cause massive delays and increased pricing. It's already causing increased pricing. According to the Associated Press, there has been some major price gouging. So no matter what happens, let's say it magically gets negotiated before 12 a.m. tonight, there's still going to be an effect on our prices because what has happened is that the ships that were supposed to go in through the East were already diverted to the West Coast. And there has been some massive price gouging on that. They are charging insane amounts to divert the ships. So what happens is that there's already contracts in place for these ships to come in at specific ports and the price is already set. But when there's something like this that happens, it's like an emergency situation, they're charging extra. And that price, that extra charge is going to come down to the consumer. But that's not the main disruption. Hopefully it gets resolved within a week or so because we're looking at one day, just one day of the ports being closed is expected to cause a six day backup for us to catch up for every day that's closed. And it's also expected to cost about $6 billion each day that is closed. These ports, it includes 36 ports along the East and Gulf Coast. Should you freak out and panic? No, I've never said that. I've always said to be prepared. You should be prepared either way because we are in a pretty serious time right now before these, these elections. And it, it does not need to be expensive. Rice and beans, extra formula if you need formula. Think about the essentials and no, it's not toilet paper that you need. All right, pumpkins, all right, pumpkins. So every now and then I do get a little real, little, little real talk that talk, okay? And today's that day. So as I am filming it, it is September 30th, okay? October 1st will be in about 30 minutes. If you are living in the U.S., we are living in Bible times. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about this. Let's let's watch. We know that we're in a fight. If if, if they want to fight, then a war is what they're gonna get. I've been a longshoreman for over 23 years, and one thing I do know to be true: gas has went up. The cost of living has constantly went up. And and, and, and and throughout these 23 years that I've been on the waterfront, we've only asked for $2, $3, or maybe $5 over the course of the contract. We've done our part. And we're now we're asking, hey, you do your part. Because during the pandemic, we never stopped working. Imagine that a hospital True. is looking for a type of blood uh, to be shipped to it. And it's on, on the ship that I'm working on. But it's pouring down raining, lightning. 
we can't stop working. We got to get that that box off so that that hospital can continue to drive and, and save the people lives that they've been working on. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at with it. And we, we just want to be respected for it. And, and, and I think it's high time that we demand that. And we, we, we're long overdue. Automation is serious. Yeah. Because when you bring new automation... Did you hear what he just said? Automation is serious. Let's keep going. Engineer, the takeaway from my job, you don't you don't make means for that person to have a job. They're, they're, they're pushed over to the side and they can't do their job that they've been accustomed to doing. What we're asking is allow our people to continue to work in this industry without going to get an extra job to make ends meet. Allow us Allow them to do their job without making, getting another job to make ends meet, like the rest of us Americans. Hold that thought now. Don't, 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 don't come for me just yet. Just listen. Take care of our families like we've been doing with, with the wages that we currently have in place. Continue that trend. That's all we're asking for. And if we have to sit out two days, two weeks, two months, we're prepared to do that. What about your brothers and sisters, your aunties, your friends, your neighbors? Are they prepared to do that? They are prepared to go two days, two weeks, two months to be on strike without any back end, without any money. You know who's not prepared to go two days, two weeks, two months? Most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Most Americans are struggling financially. But the longshoremen's are willing and able to go two days two weeks, two months on strike, however long it takes. I'm going to finish that. I'm going to let them finish. Oh, he was done. This is what I say. We are in the Bible times where it's going to cost so much for bread it's gonna cost so much for the means just to live now if you don't know me hi hey my new subscribers hey my old subscribers i'm so glad that you have joined the manners and joined the fun buckle up buttercup now i started my career my original career (laughs) in finance shocker shocker i wanted to i wanted to go to school to do a lot but my credits are mainly in accounting okay i used to finance cars me in charleston south carolina you know what's in charleston south carolina the port the port you know who used to keep us in business long shermans the company that i used to work for was a um secondary financing company okay it was owned from a it was owned by a branch called bb&t bb&t was a small 
mom and pop um mom and pop bank um it started out in north carolina and then it kind of branched down to south carolina kind of stayed in the carolinas area you didn't really see them up north i believe they might have had a branch in in um florida they may have had a branch in georgia a couple of branches in georgia i'm not quite sure excuse me but for the most part it was north carolina south carolina because our home office was in north carolina okay so me financing vehicles longshoremen's made big money big money big money and you know they are very exclusive they are very exclusive so you just can't just be like oh um i want to work on the port you have to know someone to get in you have to know someone to get in you can't just be like you know what well, i want to be a longshoreman i'm willing to work hard things like mm-mm, mm-mm. You have to know someone to get in. And they were the ones that always, like, their check used to be out of this world. You hear me? Out of this world. Now, I don't know how it worked because I don't know that in. I also know a little, not a lot, poquito of the trucking industry i know a little bit because my father owns his own trucking company i've been meaning to talk about this for so long and i just i don't know i don't know so right now as it stands I know for sure that a few of the trucks have deliveries to make this week now I don't know if that's still going to happen when it comes in about 20 minutes things could change okay things could change Long Shermans make long money and they're unionized. They are willing to put us at risk. And I'm not trying to say that they shouldn't. But they've been making money for a very long time. Okay. They have the backing and the power to do a lot do you hear me do you understand that part because they are not going to we're excuse me we're not going to be able to have the necessary things to help make us survive living in this country the things that are imported is mad when we can't even stand on our own two feet as a country they were burning up the crops everything is imported we have to look for another country to help us look and appear to be flourishing let's look at another video because my mind is going at a million rates and i don't want to come across too wrong okay they're making billions and they're spending it fast as they make it i want a piece of that for my men and i get it 
You know who wants a piece of that for people too? Nevertheless. When they made their most money was during COVID. When I think everyone made their most money during COVID. But that could just be me. My men had to go to work on those piers every single day when everybody stayed home and went to work. Not my men. They died out there with the virus. We all got sick with the virus. We kept them going. From Canada to Maine to Texas, Great Lakes, Puerto Rico, now the Bahamas, everybody went to work on COVID. Nobody stayed home. Well, I want to be compensated for that. I'm not asking for the world. They want to be compensated for that. I totally get it. You know who else want to be compensated for that? The ones that went to work. That was a necessary, essential worker. You know where my hangout spot was at? During COVID, the gas station. The gas station at 2 o'clock a.m., 12 o'clock a.m., 1 o'clock a.m., whatever. But they were essential workers. You know who else was essential workers? Walmart. No, I get Walmart because, you know, Walmart also has the, um, the, uh, food store connected to it. But let's back it up. The weed, uh, I don't want to call it dispensary was an essential worker. Liquor stores. Did they get compensated? Pretty sure they did. A lot of those companies had gotten inflated checks to be able to give to the employees. Now, I could be wrong on that one. But if I'm not mistaken, my hair looks a hot mess. If I'm not mistaken, they had gotten a padded check on top of the check that they were getting so wouldn't the longshoremen's gotten that inflated padded check as well i could be wrong i don't know they know what i want they know what i want and if they don't well then i have to go into the street and we have to fight for what we rightfully deserve these people today don't know what a strike is. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. We're going to set this country on fire. That is what's going to happen. If you think the pandemic was crazy, if you think the George Floyd stuff was crazy with the looting and the fires wait till the strike happens and everything is inflated price wise everything is inflated price wise first week be all over the news every night boom boom second week guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships they get lit. You remember that? The cars, the newer cars could not sell because of the chip that was in China could not be made and come in. So they didn't have new cars. Get off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. 
Isn't that sad? That we, United States, can't stand on our own two feet. The man just said everything comes in. So you got the people burning their crops and you're importing the food. Hey TikTok, it's snowing and I am out in a field of sunflowers we was gonna harvest. We make pretty good money growing sunflowers here in Ohio. Uh, usually make three, four thousand dollars an acre profit. But uh, with this new uh, government program where they're paying everyone to destroy their crops, they're actually gonna pay us $7,000 a year uh, per acre to destroy. So we got about 30,000 acres of sunflowers we're gonna disc under here and get that $7,000 per acre. And not only that, they're gonna boost our subsidies from uh, half a billion dollars um, up to uh, a full billion per family member. So, I mean, this is a no brainer here. So we're out here destroying these as fast as we can. Uh, we got 72 hours and uh, like I say, it's snowing and we're just putting them under. Check it out. So I don't know what we're gonna do with all the money we make. Um, you know, last year with all the money we made destroying crops, I went out and bought a new uh, 8RX tractor and I actually completely forgot about it till I was in the barn the other day. I backed it in there at the end of the year, you know, bought it for tax purposes, completely forgot about it. And uh, maybe I'll get that out next spring, maybe hooked to the plant or something, probably have to buy. I don't know, I was thinking about ordering one of those X9 combines for a tax write-off this year. Don't really need it, but you know, just might buy one as a spare. But anyways, um, yeah. Like I said, uh, get these crops destroyed here, get that payment here before the end of the year, and uh, we should be good to go. And I really hope nobody believed anything I just told you right now. Um, I know I get messages all the time, does the government really pay farmers to destroy their crops? And the answer is no. This field actually had winter wheat in it, it was harvested, and just planted a cover crop in here, a mixture of oats, sunflowers, and so forth. And we're just working it under, this field will be corn next year. But uh, anyways, it's good to joke around. I know everybody takes everything that's on the internet serious, but sometimes maybe you shouldn't. Have a good one. Part two, farmer's worst nightmare. Taking his whole crop out. My regulations, the can't get rid of it. Then the rich man comes along force them to clean the whole crop out same for the new fruit and this fruit perfect this fruit is not bad some of it's not even ripe yet. this fruit is california's best yeah ruby red grapefruit lemons oranges a whole year's worth of work plain grapefruit i think i'm through the, the crying and whining Piles, piles. Clean me out. Valencia oranges. California's best. I can open one of these up to show you how good they are. Look at the juices coming out of that. These are all been ripened all the way. Sweeter than you'll get in any store, all organic. Another farmer gone. Thanks, United States. Thanks, rich man. Poor man can't survive no more. A little farmer can't survive. You guys take care. Pray for all the farmers that are left necessarily past their mind. Over 85% of the grass fed beef in uh, you know, the American market is imported product, not raised in America. Mm. Isn't that nuts? The worst part is that imported beef is legally labeled product of the USA. How's that? If value is added in this country, it's a product of the USA. What? We, we, <laughs> compete with, we compete with it every day. How do they add value? If, you, if they grind it, slice it, cut it, package it, label it. We box it. Transport it. But the animal, make, make no mistake, the animal was born, raised, and slaughtered in Uruguay, uh, Australia, New Zealand, or 20 other countries. The manufacturers that used to be here in these, in the United States, they're all gone. They're overseas because it's cheaper labor. 
is she believer? But now you're in the pickle. We're in the pickle. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. Never said that your job wasn't important. However, again, when I financed cars, Jean was born in 2002 and I got that job 2003. So, y'all used to make big money back then. I can't imagine y'all not making money. However, I can imagine y'all wanting more money, more money, more money. Because, like he said, those corporations made billions of dollars. They want a piece of the pie too. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the companies money to pay their salaries. Well, they go one from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down. And let's Who's going to win in the long run? Who's going to win in the long run? Everyone is going to suffer. When this strike happens, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer big. And again, the long showman said, it can take two days two weeks two months they're ready they're ready for this impact they're ready for this loss who's not ready we're not ready get a contract and let's move on with this world in today's world i'll cripple you i will cripple you and you have no idea what that means. Nobody does. He'll cripple us. I have one more video. Because remember what the first guy said. Okay? Remember what the first guy said. Hey, I'm about to blow your minds with this one. Y'all know why the port workers and longshoremen are striking tonight at midnight, October 1st, as we speak? You know why? They wanted a 32% increase in raise, right? But the man... 32% increase raise. Again, I don't recall how much longshoremen's were making back then. I just remember if they were longshoremen, they pretty much already got approved. <laughs> they pretty much already had gotten approved because they had the money. They had the money. If they was on their job for a certain amount of um, time, um, if they made, if they meet the threshold, the debt to debt to net was pretty much all right. The fact that they had stability and they were a long German, they pretty much got proved. Rewind. Let's hear it again. What you say, good man? I'm about to blow your minds with this one. Y'all know why the port workers and longshoremen are striking tonight at midnight, October 1st, as we speak? You know why? Why? They wanted a 32% increase in rates, right? But the main reason, here it is, you can go look this up. The main reason is they want their companies to guarantee their jobs do not get replaced by automation. Automation. AI, artificial intelligence. Everyone is. I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> now, um, I didn't know <laughs> that this mic 
had went out. Sorry, not the mic that I wasn't filming. So if it's a little hush posh, forgive me, but I will still try to entertain you. All right. Sorry, brain fart. But everyone is disposable now. Everyone is disposable now. So they want to be guaranteed that they have a job. Guaranteed. No one's guaranteed. Shoot, the actors are not even guaranteed. And they're the ones that sit there and make us laugh. They don't want their jobs getting potentially replaced by robots. Did y'all know we have two ports open who solely ran on automation? It solely ran on automation. There's mm. not a single human on site. And they're more efficient. Of course they are. They're robots. They're not humans. Because I could, I, this whole time, I'm like, oh my gosh, corporations are so greedy. They're literally willing to lose billions of dollars instead of paying their employees. It's not even about the money. It's about the fact that they can't guarantee these workers, these uh, longshoremen and all these jobs, they can't guarantee them for a fact that their job in the near future or the far future will be replaced by AI. And that's the hold up. And that's that the, is hold, the up. hold up, y'all. Isn't that that's crazy? Are they gonna go on strike? They pretty much are. They are. How long they wanna strike? No one knows. Are we in for a fight? We are. So comment down below. Tell me what you think. I'm past my 20 minute mark. Uh tell me what you think how do y'all feel about this because we're in trouble no matter how you slice it we're in trouble so thanks for watching rating subscribing all that good jazz that makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside peace and peace bye and um I leave my playlist for the talk that talk over there and some of my makeup reviews and things like that on here.